Uh, all right. So is my mic fine? I, uh, yeah. I found this uh, like under my couch. So <laughs> yeah, it sounds fine. Uh, what are your pronouns? Uh, he him. All right. All righty. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. What you got for me? You got some critiques okay. or something? Yeah. So uh, with your rhetoric, mm -hmm. I've noticed one thing that uh, seems to come off to a lot of people is that you seem to like they seem to see you as really angry and aggressive. Yeah. And mostly I think dudes, that yeah. mostly. Yeah, I think that mostly cause, does come down to sexism, right? That's a like a lot of it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is a real like big issue because you know a lot of guys have that sort of mentality that if there's an aggressive woman, she comes off as like a caddy or a bitch or something like that. Yep. I think that real issue, and I think that purely for an optical thing, mm -hmm. that it might be better for sometimes for you to keep your cool. No. Uh, why so? Because I don't want to. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I don't. I don't care. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who are gonna get mega triggered, um, by uh, by me getting angry about things that I think are completely justified to be angry about, and if that bothers them, well, they can die mad. Because guess yeah, what? Yeah, uh, no. They'll probably come around to me, or they'll hate my goddamn guts. Um, I totally and, agree. Yeah, I've been growing perfectly totally... fine without needing to to sense, censor myself any further. I am not. I am. I am not interested uh, in playing the demure, demure polite uh, woman role. Uh, I. Uh, I just. Uh, it. It doesn't work for me, and it doesn't seem to work for rhetoric. Uh, dudes will sit and scream at each other and call each other names and bitches and cunts and whatever else all day every day and i'm not gonna just um i'm not just gonna like tone down my rhetoric in the name of like appeasing a handful of highly sensitive dudes not gonna happen yeah you know i think that's totally fair uh, i think you're totally right on that because it does seem kind of ridiculous how uh, you're treated so often especially like with uh, the destiny stuff that happened the d.gg oh, yeah that was real bad uh yeah. and oh fucking that panel with CTV going like, do you think you're special? Do you think you're special? Yeah. That bullshit was insane. Yeah. So I, mean, I totally it's, it's like understand. For, for three hours, I was incredibly chill. And at the very end, I got really fucking annoyed. And I think justifiably about people advocating for like worshiping Elon Musk because he's going to make us slaves on Mars. And that will at least get us to Mars. I'm like, no, I don't want. Why? Why would I sit oh. there and just I don't know. It's just so frustrating. And then also Absolutely. they talked over me every single every single time I spoke up and I was really chill and waited my turn every single time with maybe one exception where I popped in and was like wrong um but other than that i got interrupted every single time i talked and yeah i just uh i uh, call me jaded but i just don't care anymore if there's a uh, like i don't want to I, I don't want to bring people into my audience that are going to be like just passively sexist i feel like i owe more to my audience you know what i mean like they can get over it if they if they don't want to like i mean i understand that there's perhaps some benefit to like toning down my language or whatever um but like uh but at the same time there's a lot lost because there are a lot of first of all this is something that a lot of people don't think about guess what there are a lot of women out there who lurk in chats and don't feel heard they don't feel like there's anybody out there who speaks to them. And that's what I care about. I don't care just about dudes. If there's uh, like, there's a lot of women out there. There's a lot of non-binary people who don't feel represented at all, who don't feel like they ever get a chance to say what they really want to say. And I want to reach those people. And guess what? A lot of them hang out in my audience as it turns out. There are a lot, lot of women who watch my show and I'm really happy with that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my position. I, I get mistreated like all the time on these panels and I don't really like, it is what it is. I've gotten used to it. I've been doing it for like a year. I just, I, uh, yeah, while I, while I, I have taken advice to like, you know, uh, like give people more margin, I'm not going to do it forever. I just, I just can't, you know, I can't do it. I can't be forever patient in the name of like slightly winning, like slightly buffing my optics. That's all. Oh damn it! Looks like the white the site chat went down for a second. Yeah, I was watching that. I was about to say that too, but uh, yeah, I totally agree. I think you're right. Uh, maybe I was coming in here thinking, you know, uh, as a man, I have a certain perspective and I have my own uh, implicit biases. So I think that it, you're probably right. I probably shouldn't have uh, come in and brought that up. Oh, but that's fine. 
I don't think you're wrong okay. for bringing it up. I'm I I appreciate you for for being willing to discuss it with me. I just you know, I'm just going to tell you my thoughts pretty bluntly. I'm not mad at you or anything, you know. Oh. You didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Well, I, just, no, uh, I didn't think you were mad at me. No, it was, it's fine. Uh anyway, uh I'll head out soon. But real quick, sure. one question. Yes. What's your favorite Kingdom Hearts game? What's my favorite Kingdom Hearts game? The OG Kingdom Hearts. Um, it will always have a special place in my heart. That's why I got the original OG Kingdom Hearts uh, poster on my wall back there. Although, honorable mentions to Chain of Memories. I really liked Chain of Memories. Um, but for me... Really? Yeah, I loved it, actually. Um, it was... Ah, uh, that I just can't understand. I mean, Chain of Memories is probably my least favorite of all of them. Yeah, I know it's a uh, I know it's a, de a divisive one, uh, mostly because the gameplay is very different, um, but I love the card system. I also love card games in general, so to me, like, the system made a... Like, it took for... It took me for, a, like, a while to get the system, but once I did, I was, like, really good at it. And I even did, yeah. like, the whole New Game Plus thing and all that. I don't know. I really liked uh, Chain of Memories. I thought it was... Um, I'll yeah, well done. I'll admit the cards were fun, but they weren't enough to hold me through uh, the grindingness of it and the uh, yeah. really boring maps and areas. Aww. I don't know. I mean, I like being but able to I build can the totally... maps with cards, but, but yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. But I totally agree with you on Kingdom Hearts 1 being the best. Yeah, it's uh, the best. Also, had the, it was so the... the, the, the uh, or what's it called? The Colosseum in that game was the was so good. It was oh, so absolutely. good in the classic. They didn't do it as well. Um, um, like they didn't do it as well in the second one, in my opinion, because it was all like time trials. And yeah. I'm like, ah, give me the big fights. I liked fighting the giants. Yeah, that and was so much Sephiroth worse. And, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll head out now. All right. Well, uh, hey, thanks, thanks for, for having on. me on. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. 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 Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Pronouns? Uh, they, them. All righty. So happy to have you on at long last. I hope you're doing wonderfully. I am doing wonderfully indeed. So good to be finally on. Yay. Um, all right. So hit me with your, hit me with your, uh, with your, uh, gun control takes and we'll, we'll see if we can come to some synthesis. Well, I've only sort of recently realized the American idea of gun control. Um, being in Australia, we don't have guns. They, we had one mass shooting, and they said, no more, you don't get them. You get them for hunting, that's it. Yeah. Yep. And so watching you and watching Vosh, I sort of see this sort of lefty idea, not from you always, I don't know your sense on gun control, um, but like that leftists should embrace gun control and own guns and all that sort of stuff which sort of as an australian makes me freak out a little bit because it's like why does everyone need guns yeah uh so i can explain my position and why i think it and why i think our situation is unique compared to other uh countries so um the first thing um america has so many guns i promise you take whatever you're like the most ridiculous amount of guns that you can imagine and then maybe double that and you'll probably be close to what how many guns are actually in america we have way more guns than people and most people um like lots of people in america own multiple guns my dad um owned more guns than i could count uh so many guns you couldn't even believe it our house was full of them my dad had uh guns hidden in uh books that were cut out he had guns hidden in VHS cassettes. He had a shotgun hidden in the back of his couch sort of thing. Um, and he had a gun safe full of guns. Um, and yeah, a lot of guns. Uh, Americans have a lot of guns in general. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild. I knew people were going to kind of freak out. That's weird even for America. But um, yeah, America has a lot of guns. And so... Um, the idea of, um, of gun control in America is like unfeasible. Like the idea that we could do an Australian thing where we round up and melt down all the guns or do buybacks or, um, various programs like that. Um, it's like, it, it's, it wouldn't happen. It can't happen. Um, no, uh, yeah. well, even just Googling, like how many guns America owns, it's like 393 million approximately 
compared to we only destroyed like 600,000 guns. Yeah. So like you've got a lot more guns. Um, and it's so much more cultural with America too, yeah. I find. Like it's like I've got my gun and I've got my beer and I'm good to go. Mhm. Yep. Um, now, I grew up in a place where guns were incredibly common. Uh, I grew up in an incredibly rural state um, where lots of people hunted with their guns. Uh, it was regular for you to go to the store and just see multiple cars with uh, hunting rifles like in the back window. Um, and it's the same here, too. Like, we have so many hunters like in the country going out, killing deer going out and shooting whatever they want not mm -hmm. to eat but just for sport yeah we have like sport and we have subsistence here. uh subsistence hunters um but so i grew up in a state that had like a, a lot of guns and i i do know that it is possible I, you know, I never knew anybody who got shot um uh like in my life even though i lived in one of the highest states for having gun ownership it, it really depends on the culture in the state that i grew up in gun culture was um pretty reasonable like there was it wasn't i mean it's still american it's still not great but it was like you know it was normal for people to get trained at a young age like many people that i knew including myself like for your like 16th or 15th birthday you would get uh your parents would buy you uh, uh a gun class so you can go get your your license um and a lot of that is because there's a lot, again a lot of hunters um but also just because they want people to be safe so that's kind of a that's kind of okay um the thing is that like uh in america it is a bit of a problem of like um everybody's got guns so if you don't have guns you're at a distinct advantage a disadvantage in the case that anything does go down and uh if you haven't noticed uh, things have been going down here for quite a while um, I, I have noticed just, yeah. just a little bit just a little. <laughs> keeping a little eye yeah it's not good um and unfortunately uh what that means is that like i, I don't think it's it's like uh disarm like like universal disarmament is feasible in america and as a result i would rather have lots of lefties with guns than lots of lefties without them now i am not the type of person who believes that the purpose like that a gun can reasonably protect you from the full force of the state like um some a lot of conservatives will be like yeah i'm gonna build a machine gun turret on my roof and then when the when the government comes for me uh with their alien tech i'll be able to shoot them down and that kind of thing and that's not my viewpoint i think the value of a, of a gun is mostly as a deterrent um and i've described this before um uh say you have a gang of heavily armed white nationalists um with uh a lot of local power and they want to target a community of trans people uh trans people in america tend to congregate in the same areas there's a lot of gay neighborhoods and trans neighborhoods it's just a fact of reality it's how you live in a country that is so patchwork lots of trans people will leave rural areas and go to big cities and there's neighborhoods of lots and lots of minorities that live together um it's ghettoization but it is what it is um and so say the police want to crack down on those degenerate unde undesirables so to say um and they uh know that they can do so without any risk to their own um say did I say the gang the gang yeah the gang wants to crack mm. down um on uh people in that neighborhood um they can do so if, yeah yeah they, they can do so easily however if they know even if it's even if the government has the information if they know that every person in that neighborhood statistically has a gun um in their house that gang is going to be a lot less likely be, by a sheer level of um by on the sheer level of getting the people who are actually have to go in there to go do that are going to be much less likely to be all gung-ho about it if they know that there's a small chance that somebody could fire back um and yeah that is the biggest reason i think that that uh that people should embrace uh guns in america is because it does have a deterrent effect um it is it means that yeah like you will never no nobody even if you were able, even if there was complete legalization of every weapon and you could literally have like light machine guns or heavy machine guns at your house, you would never be able to stand up against the full might of the military. However, the fact of the matter is that uh, mobilizing the full might of, of like the military is, ne is almost never going to happen. Like it, it won't happen. And if it was ever to happen, um, it would be 
such a PR disaster that you would, the people would undeniably be destroyed. But in the follow-up, people would not stand for that. That would be considered as unforgivable because you make a really loud noise. As it turns out, it's really hard to cover up uh, blowing people up with a drone or a tank or a bomb or anything like that. It's like really, really hard to do that. Um, but it's a lot easier to have a bunch of um, gang members, um, you know, that, uh, like, like I said, white nationalist gang members kick down a few doors um, and beat up on people but they can't do that if everybody has guns there because that's an actual reasonable risk to the to the frontline gang members um and those uh, so that's the main thing the point is to raise the threshold um by uh by which the gang of white nationalists can um and white supremacists can actually like raise the raise the uh the threshold by which they would have to take action if they wanted to take action well they're going to have to make a loud noise. They're going to have to make a mess. They're going to have to attract the attention of the media. They're going to have to make it heard like what happened this last year. Um, you know, they in order for the for the uh, gang, <clears throat> sorry, for the gang of, of white supremacists to crack down on people, um, they had to make so much noise that it became um, that there was a massive protest against this gang um, that swept across the nation. Um, and so, yeah, that's the reason why mm. I support it now, um, in some, you know, future where we've made some serious progress and we're not like immediately at the threat of tip, 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 like yeah. toppling over into fascism. I would love to live in a world where not everyone has guns, where there's not like a small risk, um, that one of your neighbors, uh, accidentally discharges their firearm and it goes through your floor and hits you while you're sleeping or something like, you know what I mean? Like that's terrible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, well, that's what I was thinking. Like, do you work out the cultural stuff first and like could get rid of that fascist problem that we've all got going on yeah. around the world because white nationalists, they're here in Australia too. Yeah. I'm in a small country town and there's Trump supporters wearing Trump hats in a country, Victorian Australian town. Like it's, madness how far this is spread yeah do, do we need to f focus on sort of eradicating these crazy nutcase fascists yeah i mean I and think then that, yeah. bring up the conversation of like gun control and maybe we can stop having them in every home or oh 100 you know. i would love to get to a point where we could we could make those motions it's just like it's kind of like um you wouldn't lay down even if you only had like shitty weapons, you wouldn't lay them down if you were next to Nazi Germany because they would just immediately invade and plow over you. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so you have to keep them. It's a necessary evil. And I think that lefties owning firearms in America is a necessary evil. Um, should be done with great respect. I, do ne I never want my fellow lefties to put themselves in danger. But the fact of the matter is, is that uh, communities need to have some amount of protection they need to be able to especially if we see a resurgence of what's been going on over the last year of um like militia groups which are heavily armed and will never not be heavily armed they are going to they will keep those guns even if they're illicit guns mm. um and they're going to keep targeting vulnerable groups and small minority groups yes, ethnic ethnic groups yep. trans people gay people like yep. pulse orlando that was the big moment that I saw yeah. America have their mass shooting and it felt relatable to me. Yeah, and, and the I'm thing like, that sucks I is like, yeah, 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 exactly. And, and the thing is, is like, it, there's almost nothing you can do. It's sad, but there's so little that you can do about the problem of mass shootings because we have this state of affairs. And it, it is a big thing. I think that like, uh, like breaking down groups like the NRA is going to be hugely important. Uh, I think defeating the Republican Party once and for all is going to be really important. Um, That's the big goal. That's yeah. the main one. That it's we just, it's a big problem. And until then, I am very reluctant to pass gun control that would more easily, um, that would more easily target um, marginalized people. Like, for example, I'm very skeptical of this current bill, this current gun control bill being provo proposed by um, Biden because it focuses so much on criminal background checks. Well, guess who has a guess who gets arrested for crimes more frequently in this country? A lot of black people. A lot of black people. And people a lot of color. Of, yeah, people of color. Um, trans people. Um, yep. pro, uh, sex workers. They get they get hit for 
crimes. They are over-policed like And fuck. they lose their only defense. And then they lose their and only defense. only protect him. Yep. And the thing is, is that, uh, again, they might lose their only defense against literal gangs. Fascists. Like, not, not just the, the, the world's biggest gang, but also other gangs. Yeah, like mm, militia like groups. Small-time gangs and fascists. Like, Boog Boogaloo it, boys, shit like that. We're all vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it's frustrating, um, you know, it's frustrating that we're in this state of affairs, but uh, but you know, I don't I don't see a solution outside of um, uh, I know that lefties will if if we were to reach a point where people could live safely, um, lefties would be willing to give up their guns, um, um, but I just don't see it happening um also Not to answer the soon. question from chat reader on the wall could you see a huge clampdown on all guns no because uh i think that i think a lot of people who don't live here don't understand how uh deeply ingrained it is like texas would probably a large swath of texas would unironically attempt to secede from the union if there was even bait like a like small oh, buyback buyback problem there's like extremism this is extremism the the oath keepers are like a thousand have thousands of members all of whom believe in arming themselves with the highest uh amount of armaments possible these people um buy illicit grenades these people buy fucking landmines on the black market like it's ridiculous and it's just impossible to do with the amount of guns america has too like yeah. there's just no other country has well there's probably heaps of other countries but to the mass scale like Australia had a fraction, a tiny one percent of the amount of guns you've got. Yeah. Like it, it's unfeasible to say we can get rid of them all in America without sort of dealing with the cultural issues first, and it'll be hundreds of years, I dare say, before Texas is ready to give up their guns. Also, like, uh, I did my video a while back on the Battle of Blair Mountain. The Battle of Blair Mountain um, became like such a huge um, turning point for labor um, in America, specifically because all of the miners had tons of guns. Like literally, they had machine guns at that point that they were able to get. Um, that like fully automatic weapons weren't like severely regulated in the United States until much later on. They had machine guns and set up machine gun nets, nests, and yeah, they got they got beaten in the end, and a lot of people died. But it made such a huge deal. It it was such a a, a disaster. Every newspaper in the nation was talking about how the U.S. military, um, and private militias that were hired by corporations killed a bunch of miners and uh. It was not easy for them to do. They literally had to call in the help of the U.S. military because the private militia groups couldn't couldn't do it, and that made such a stink that it it actually turned. Uh, it was considered like a a big labor win in the long run, even though that's the Battle of Blair Mountain actually failed for the miners and they lost their rights. But across the country, um, it empowered unions and it became such a thing that the the public uh the the public opinion turned against corporations and against the u.s government on that matter so there is precedent for it it's just um uh, it's just a tough it's a tough line to walk yeah and you've got to time it right especially with yeah. everything going on like you've just had an insurrection yeah i don't think we need to be taking big steps to piss off these insurrectionaries that will retaliate yeah they will the moment you try and take them yeah They're, it's just not feasible at all at the moment yeah it's it's it is unfortunate so but yeah that's my position on on gun control i would really love uh i would really really love uh to see a future where this isn't the type of conversation we have to have but the fact of the matter uh again the state of america right now it just doesn't seem like it's going to happen and so that's why i don't make gun control a big priority and i tend to just advocate in favor of lefty gun ownership and uh sensible gun restrictions like um you know waiting periods and and uh safety mechanisms and um you know serial number laws that let you keep track of the guns so they don't get lost and whatever mm -hmm. yeah so absolutely hope that makes sense agree with you yeah um I don't know, Sathers. I don't know if there is. Yeah. Um, cool. I, 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 uh, anyway, I, I really appreciate you coming on. Did you have any other things you wanted to hit me with before uh, we go do the, the Vosh bullshit? <laughs> uh, absolutely. I'll hit you with thank you for your advocacy because you being out there means that the world is going to change at some point. I hope so. So, Comrade Andy, um, over here, um, and I'll just give myself a little shout-out if you please like do, please drag. Do. 
if you like drag queens and a little bit of makeup artistry, follow The Only Ziggy Richards on Instagram, and I'll be doing YouTube and streaming hopefully soon. So, fingers crossed. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dima Mama. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.